parte de un ciclo de seminarios y conferencias que hemos venido trabajando desde la maestría en ingeniería eléctrica y el programa de ingeniería eléctrica de la mano del ingeniero José Germán López y obviamente también del director del doctor Juan Salazar de Saza, hemos tratado de que traer especialistas de ciertas temáticas a nuestra universidad para que nos den digamos, los últimos avances en determinados tópicos y ustedes como estudiantes de ingeniería sepan que se está trabajando en el mundo en ciertas, en ciertas temáticas. De manera pues que yo espero que ustedes aprovechen bastante los, esta sesión también mañana tendremos otra sesión bien interesante para todos ustedes y que eh, aprovechen el invitado internacional que nosotros tenemos, él tiene amplia experiencia en el tema de la electrónica de potencia, es una referencia a nivel internacional en este tópico por lo tanto yo creo que nos sentimos eh, por parte del grupo de electrónica de potencia de la universidad es eh, definitivamente placentero para nosotros poder contar con este tipo de participantes en este evento y tenerlos a ustedes ahora sí ¿sí me escucharon todo lo que <risa> se me olvidó no, 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 no. <risa> eh, 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 acto a seguir eh, los estudiantes de el Centro de Investigación en Electrónica de Potencia y el Grupo de Investigación en Electrónica de Potencia harán una introducción de nuestro eh, lector el día de hoy ellos hablarán un poco de cuáles son, eh, quién es él, cuáles son los desarrollos que ha hecho alrededor de la electrónica de potencia. Ya luego entonces entraremos eh, en este tema. Buenas tardes. La mayoría de la presentación se va a desarrollar en inglés. Eh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the presentation about uh, modeling and control of grid inverters. Uh, you know, my name is Diego Montoya Acevedo. I am the first, the first chapter chair of the Universidad Tecnológica de Pereira. And my lab mate, Eliana, is, who is a representative, representative person of the Oil Electronic Research Group. Today, you will be here a uh, conference from Dr. Mark de Honshu from uh, Shenzhen University. We, uh, we will to take a very short time about of your time to thanks the undergraduate program and master degree in electrical engineer and the for IT branch. from the Department of Electrical Engineering in Shenyang University, China. In 1983, 1986, and 1989, respectively. Since 1996, he becomes a full professor in the College of Electrical Engineering in Shenyang University. Um, he was a visiting scholar in University of Tokyo, Japan on June 1995 to May 1996, from June to December 2000. He was a visiting professor in the CPES of Virginia, Tesh in the United States. He was also a visiting professor in the ETH in Switzerland from February 2006 to April 2000, 
seat. Mm, he is interested in power electronic topologies, control and application for renewable energy and energy efficiency. He has authored six books and has more than 200 and E triple E journal or conference papers. He holds more uh, than 30 patients in China and three in the USA. He received four IEEE Journal Conference Prize Papers Awards. He was a large ADCON member on IEEE Power Electronics Society from 2006-2008. He is associate editor of both IEEE Translation of Power Electronics and IEEE Translation on Sustainable Energy. He was of the general chair of IEEE International Symposium of Industry. Electronics ICEE 2012. Henshaw. IEEE International Symposium on Power Electronics for Distributed Generation System. PEDG. 2013, Arkansas. Um, IEEE Power Electronics and Application and um, PEAC 2014, on Shanghai. Um, International Fusion Energy Challenge Competition, um, IFEC 2015. Since 2013, he is our president of China, of China Power Supply Society. Currently, he has an IEEE Bell's Distinguished Lecture. Welcome to Dr. Ma. Thank you very much for your time to uh, this seminar. And dear professors, students, and colleagues, good afternoon. And thanks very much for Andrew's very kind invitation and a nice arrangement for my visit to your very famous university. I would also like to thank Digo for your kind application for the IEEE Parish Society and to invite me to do a distinguished lecture talk here. It is my great honor to visit your university. And it is also my first time to your beautiful countries. This morning, Andrews and Digo guide us, uh, guide me and my wife to your very beautiful campus. Actually, the, the university inside the forest. And I'm very impressed by nice, campus with very unique architecture. <laughs> very organized education and research facilities. Also very kind, very kind professors and, and students. And you are very, also a very interesting research project you are working on. And uh, joining, uh, I arrived at uh, uh, Columbia on last uh, uh, 
Saturday. I'm also very impressed with your food and Columbia coffees. <laughs> I, my wife and I really enjoy both the control and also friendship of Colombia. So thanks, uh, Alina, Al Alina? Alina, for your very kind introductions. So for the beginning, I would uh, give a very brief uh, introduction of I'm from uh, Zhejiang University. Zhejiang University. Actually, Zhejiang is the name of province, just like a state. And we are located in the, uh, we call the Hangzhou City. So Hangzhou City is one of the most busiest city in China, about 200 kilometers from, from Shanghai. And uh, the university is founded in 1897. It's a national key university. We are the member of China, uh, Chinese nine, we call nine top universities. And uh, uh, Hangzhou City is known as the, we call the paradise city uh, in China. So, uh, it is also listed as the World Heritage by UNESCO. And it used to be the Chinese capital of Song Dynasty. So if you happen to go to China, you're welcome to visit our uh, university, our cities. And this is an overview of our universities. And uh, we are the, uh, one of the most comprehensive uh, universities in China. Uh, we, and uh, uh, we have about uh, uh, 24,000 undergraduate students and have 15,000 uh, master degree students and 9,000 PhD students. And, uh, 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 we also have more than 6,000 overseas students. About 3,000 students is overseas student study for for degrees, uh, for the uh, BS degree, for math degree, or for PhD degree. And for the research funding, we are ranking number two in Chinese universities. And for the paper uh, in our university. We pay more attention to science index uh, papers. For the science index paper, we are the numbers. We are ranking number one in Chinese University. We are also ranking number one for the granted uh, patents each year. Uh, according to the uh, according to the uh, uh, ESI. Actually, it's uh, American. Uh, 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 it's a uh, American uh, uh, scientific institute or something like that. Uh, uh, the ranking system for the engineering, we are ranking 28 in the world, 
And uh, according to US news, for the NGBI, we are ranking five. Uh, I think this number is only for reference. Yeah. So this is a, a very brief information. Uh, And for the uh, for the power choice, uh, we own a national engineering research center for applied power electronics, and also we own a national laboratory of power electronics. This two facility is uh, 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 set up by central government, and is the only uh, uh, facility in the Chinese university. And uh, actually, we cover the very broad area of the uh, research on the uh, power electronics. Thank you. 
with LCI features. And certainly, I will talk now about great current damping control, how to uh, design the, the damping control for grid emergence. So because of the uh, time limitation, I will mainly focus on the uh, first uh, three part. So, but I will leave the slides uh, here. You can, if you are interested, you can also uh, read about the uh, uh, dish current rejection to the great background harmonic suppression for the great inverter and others. So first, uh, let's uh, discuss about the requirement to the grid inverter. Uh, what is the need so for the grid inverters? And for the grid inverters, actually, we pay attention to the uh, power quality of the uh, power quality of the uh, current and to the grid. Secondly, uh, we, as a grid inverter also required to have a forward, grid forward supporting ability. Thirdly, we also want uh, it has a high efficiency. And uh, 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 nowadays, uh, many grid forward uh, is in application without isolation transformer. So in this case, maybe there is some dish color were injected to the uh, grid. So actually, it's uh, not allowed uh, for the uh, dish injected to the grid. And uh, so how, how the design of the control will affect the uh, performance of the great emergence. So as we know, uh, renewable energy has been uh, uh, used and uh, such as uh, wind power turbine PV emergence. Uh, in the future, battery energy storage system will be increased uh, using uh, in the uh, distributed energy system to mitigate the uh, variation of the uh, renewable energies. So you can see whether it's a wind power, it's a, a PV system, it's a, a battery energy storage system, they are connected with the grid through uh, inverter or converter. For low power applications, for example, for residential uh, home application, usually a single phase inverter is used. But for the high power applications, uh, three phase inverter is widely used. So first let's talk about power quality. When the grid inverter connected to the, when a PV inverter or wind turbine connected to the grid, or well, it's required, it is a requirement for the, for the color injected to the grid to satisfy the uh, power quality requirement. One of the famous requirements is called IEEE 1747. Actually, it's a, 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 it's a, a requirement for PV, wind power, fuel cell, energy storage system connecting to the grid. So according to this uh, uh, standard, uh, each harmonic, each harmonic should satisfy the requirement. For example, for the harmonics, uh, less than uh, 11, 11 order should be less than 4%. And for the harmonics, between 11 and 70 should be less than 
besides the uh, harmonic restriction for single orders, there are also requirements for total harmonics. Total harmonics should be less than 5%. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, requirement for the uh, grid inverter. It's connected the current requirements, harmonic current component requirement restriction for the great uh, inverters. And also uh, for the uh, great inverter, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, required to uh, have to respond to the great fault, uh, such as a voltage, uh, voltage uh, deviation or frequency deviations. For the voltage deviation, for the voltage, you, if the voltage between the 80%, uh, 88% to 110%, that is, it's okay, it's a normal condition. If the voltage deviated this uh, rate is high or low than this rate, it should be detected by the grid inverter. So the detected response time is, is limited. Mm -hmm. For example, if the voltage is less than 88% of the rigid value and higher than 50%, it should be detected in 120 utility cycles. If the voltage set is below 50%, it should be detected in less than six utility cycles. And uh, this table just shows that when the frequency is deviated from the nominal values, it should also be detected. For the, so if the uh, grid inverter is uh, power is uh, less than 30 kilowatts, in this case, if the frequency low than 59.3 hertz, it should be detected in less than 0.16 seconds. If the frequency is higher than 6.5 hertz, it should also be detected in 0.61 seconds. So, that means when there is a fault in the utility, a uh, grid inverter, you should detect the faults and take actions. And uh, uh, as we know, with the increase of the uh, installation of renewable energies, so uh, uh, it has a high, more high requirements uh, for the uh, distribution system. So we, because uh, with the increase of penetration of renewable, that means the renewable plays a more important role in the power system. So renewable should take a more responsibility for the operation of power system. So when the utility has faults, traditionally when we have very few installation of the uh, renewable uh, PV or wind, there is a fault in the uh, utility. Usually, uh, one of our, our uh, high priority to is protection the inverter. That's the inverter safe. So we will turn off the we, we will turn off the inverter, isolated inverter from the utility. But now this because there are so many renewables. So in this case, uh, the renewable should support the fault instead of run away. So uh, many countries uh, 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 set up uh, uh, fault of light distribution abilities, requirements to the, to the both the PV inverter or wind, wind power systems. So uh, the left curve just shows the low voltage ride ability requirement for wind turbine. So when the utility voltage is set up, uh, 
For example, when the utility voltage is set to 20% of retail value, uh, according to the uh, Chinese wind turbine uh, low voltage right through standard, it's required <coughs> the wind turbine still connected to the grid for uh, 625 milliseconds. So when the wind turbine detected the voltage is set to 20%, the wind turbine should still connect to the grid for at least uh, 625 milliseconds. It cannot disconnect. At the same time, if it's a three-phase three -phase short circuit fault, the wind turbine should generate reactive power. Reactive, uh, the maximum reactive power should be 105% of the rated value of the wind turbines. So the lower the voltage is set, the higher the reactive current or reactive power should be generated by the wind turbine. Because by generating the uh, uh, reactive power to the grid, it can uh, support the voltage increase. Of, of the power systems. And uh, similarly, for the PV inverter, it is also required to uh, have the, uh, we call it, low voltage light stability. When the, util when the uh, utility voltage is uh, decreased to zero, According to Chinese standard, it still needed a PV inverter to connect it to the grid for 150 milliseconds. At the same time, to generate the reactive power, according to the voltage, uh, the deepest of the voltage sets. So the deep of voltage set, the high reactive power the PV inverter should be injected to the grid to support the operation of the grid. So every PV inverter uh, uh, produced in Chinese company should test, should pass this test requirements. And the third uh, methods requirements for the uh, renewable inverter is the efficiency because for the for the renewable uh, uh, generation plant actually the people invest on the renewable generation plant it's he want to make money so it's an invest the investment behavior so uh, uh, they want the PV inverter, wind turbine inverter, can uh, produce as much uh, energy as possible. So they pay attention to the uh, block, the efficiency. Mm -hmm. So tradition, uh, we take a PV inverter as an example. For the PV inverter, actually there are three types of architecture. One architecture is, uh, is uh, isolation. Uh, uh, the inverter is isolated through a low frequency mm -hmm. transformers. Low frequency. This is a traditional way of uh, uh, structure. Uh, because of the, it's a low frequency. So in China, we have uh, 50 utility in 50 hertz. How about in Colombia? 50 or 60 hertz? 60. 60. So it's a low frequency transport. It's very, it's also very costly. Mm -hmm. So recently, uh, uh, because it's very costly, one way is to use high frequency, mm -hmm. high frequency uh, uh, isolation. Mm -hmm. So with high frequency isolation, you can reduce the size of the uh, uh, in PV, also the cost. 
And uh, recently they have returned by uh, without isolation, especially for large PE emergencies, without isolation. Without isolation, it can reduce the size, also reduce the cost of the transport. So in China, for centralized uh, PV inverters, there are no isolation. The typical power rating is, uh, for each PV inverter is uh, 500 kilowatts. There are no isolation. And uh, this graph just shows the efficiency comparison of the different structures. So uh, traditionally, with a low frequency, uh, 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 60 hertz or 50 hertz isolation transformer, the emergency is very costly, size is big, efficiency is also not very high. And with the high frequency trans uh, transformer, usually uh, efficiency is low because there are too many conversions, usually three stage conversions. So efficiency is low. This kind of structure not only used in the micro micro inverters, usually 200 uh, 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 low power, 250 watts or uh, 500 watts, in small power cases. And for the for the for the two stage for the uh, uh, for example we call a string strings uh, PV inverter power rating uh, in the uh, uh, 10 kilowatt to uh, 20 kilowatt or even 50 kilowatt usually use two stage structures and for the very large power I just said 500 kilowatt for the centralized power plant they use uh, 500 kilowatt in one megawatt PV inverter. They use only one state without isolation. So in this case, efficiency at the retail power can be as high as 90%. Uh, recently, people use a uh, new device, silicon carbide device, uh, silicon car carbon uh, mostly or uh, GAN device to further increase efficiency. And as I, uh, I said, because without uh, isolation, we can reduce the cost of the inverter, also uh, reduce the size. But the problem is, without isolation, sometimes if you do not control the inverter very well, it will generate some DC kind of components injected to the grid. So uh, some countries design some standard for limit uh, DC kind of injection for the uh, for the PV inverter or renewable inverters. So actually, uh, control control design of the PV inverter or wind power uh, uh, converters play a very important role to the performance of the uh, grid inverters. So this is a very simple diagram of the uh, can be a single phase uh, uh, grid inverters. So you can see uh, usually the grid inverter sh frequency should be synchronized with the uh, utility frequencies. Mm -hmm. So we need a, uh, typically we need a face locked loop to synchronize the operating frequency of the uh, uh, inverter with the uh, utility frequency. So it's a uh, use a face lock loop. And uh, so uh, sometimes uh, this is a command for active power. So as I said, in some cases, uh, it requires a, a great inverter also produce reactive power, especially in the uh, great fault cases. So uh, uh, sometimes it's also require generating reactive power. So 
by combining the active power command and grid power command, we generated the uh, current command. Uh, the command for for the uh, total uh, com uh, current command requirement. And so inside the usually we should detect the, the, the real color in the grid and compare with the current command. And so we, you, we need a, a, a current control. Uh, uh, typically, we will use a PI control to control the current. And uh, inside is a PWM model. So the control design or the PWM modulated design will affect the performance of the so basically, the, the control design will affect the, the dynamics of the uh, grid inverter and will affect just the power quality, mm -hmm. current windfall injected to the grid. And also will affect the DC components if there is no isolation. Maybe there is some possibility. Uh, if you don't control very well, there are some DC components injected to the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, also, usually the PWM design will, aff will affect the power qualities. Also, will affect conversion efficiencies. So, so we just dis very briefly discussed about the uh, requirement uh, for the uh, grid inverter. And uh, the control design is uh, critical to the performance of grid inversion. It will affect four the dynamics, power quality, efficiency, and DC uh, injection to the grid. So secondly, I want to talk about the uh, main part of this uh, tutorial about the dynamic model. I found uh, uh, really excellent studies in the, uh, uh, this university and on the control, on the modeling of the uh, power charge system. So I will talk about the great inverter with the air signal filters. So in this part, I will talk about, first I will talk about the switching model. Secondly, uh, I will talk in the energy models in uh, static frame. Okay? Once we got the static uh, frame model, we can got an uh, energy model in detail frames. And then we can get a, a circuit, equivalent circuit. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a very popular uh, grid inverter uh, used in, either used in the large PV inverter or in the world wind turbines. So as we know, uh, why we use the uh, air CR filter? Study shows that air CR filter has small size compared with the air filter or compared with the air filter, which has a small size. So it attracts uh, many stars. But the LCL field, as we see, it's a higher system. So it's difficult to control. Uh, it's also more complex to model. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for the modeling, we make the uh, following assumption that if all the inductors and the capacitor are needed and all uh, power switch we used is the I, ideal switch. And also, uh, the parameters. Parameter for phase A, phase B, phase C is, 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 is symmetrical. So that means the inductor L1A, L1B, L1C is the same. And inductor L2 
for phase A, phase C is the same. And a uh, few capacitor for phase A, phase C, uh, phase B, phase C is the same. So the uh, so idea is the first step we got a uh, uh, switching module, uh, switching module uh, with the variable is discontinuous. Then we make an effort to got a continuous model, but in, in A, B, C frame. Then we got the model in detail for rotating frame. First, uh, when we observe the search, we can see actually this part is linear. So it's simple. Huh? This part is linear. And only this part in the inside the square is non. It's composed of switch. So it's non. Mm -hmm. So for us, us it's easy to to drive uh, to set up an equation for the linear. So we are focused on the Nonlinear. We call this a uh, switching network. Switching network. So uh, before we uh, beginning to drive the uh, equation for switching network, first we define a switching function. So we can say for phase A, we can define a switching function called S A. For phase A, we as uh, uh, in practical uh, operation actually switch S one and S four is operate comparatively. Where upper switch is for is S one is off, S four is off. Mm -hmm. If the low switch S four is on. The upper switch S1 is off. So we can introduce a, a switching function SA. SA equals 1 when the upper switch is off, the low switch is off. S1 equals 0 when the low switch is on, upper switch is off. So by introducing the switching function, S A, we can define the state of switch state of phase A. Mm -hmm. So the same with for phase B, we can introduce a function, a function, switch function S B. If the upper switch is on, S B equals one. If the Low switch is on, upper switch is off, SV equals D. For the same way, we can define switching function for SC. Mm -hmm. And once we have switching function SA, SV, SC, we can also define duty cycle, or sometimes we call it duty ratio for phase A and phase B and phase C. Actually, for phase A, the duty ratio DA is actually it's the average of the switching function of FA over switching period. So here, uh, TS is the the integration duration actually is equal to the switching period TS switching period. So actually. By integration, the phase A switch function, we got the duty cycle for, for phase A. Mm -hmm. The same, we define a duty cycle for phase B and phase C. We can got a vector composed of the phase A, phase B, phase C duty cycles. Mm -hmm.
So now let's <laughs> investigate the, uh, uh, we can see for the, this switch network, this is a DC side. This is the AC side. So we want to find the relationship between the DC side and the AC side. The current of how, what is the relationship between the current of the DC side and the AC side? What is the, the relationship of the voltage on the DC side and the AC side? So once we get, a, if we can get a, the, the relationship of DC side and AC side, actually we can replace the switch network with equivalent circuit. Mm -hmm. Let's see, first let's see the the relationship of the DC side color, uh, uh, the relationship of the uh, between the DC side color and the AC side color. So we can say for DC side color, IDC. So IDC is actually uh, related to the AC side color, I1, I1, B, and I1, C. See? So if the, for, we take the phase A as an example, if the phase A upper switch is conducted, then phase A AC color is contributed to the DC side. If the phase A upper switch is off, actually this color is not contributed to the DC side. So when the up when S A equals 1. Switching function SA equals 1. That means upper switch is on. Then the AC color is added to the DC side. So according to the state of phase A, the switching function XA, it can decide if I1A is contributed to DC side. Mm -hmm. The same is true for phase B and the phase C. So in this way, we get a very simple relationship between the DC side color and the AC side color, I1A, I1B, and I1C. Mm -hmm. So when the, for phase A, when the SA equals 1, that means upper switch is on, low switch is off, then the AC color, I1A. The added contributed to this color. Mm -hmm. The same true. The same is true for phase B, I one B, and I one C. So in this way, we got the uh, current relationship between the DC side and H side. Let's see the. Uh, let's see the uh, uh, voltage relationship. DC side voltage is U D C. And AC side voltage, we, just, let's see, we take this as a res, reference point. So UA will use the AC voltage. So how the UA will be related to the uh, DC side voltage? So it's very simple, let's see. If the switch state, we take an example of phase A. If the switch state for phase A, Switch function SA equals 1. SA equals 1. That means upper switch is conducted, low switch is off. In this case, the voltage of level UA equals UDC. Mm -hmm. If the switching function for SA is 0, that means low switch is off. So in this case, EA equals zero. So we can draw that UA AC side for UA UA actually equals SA times UDC. Mm -hmm. So if SA switch function SA equals one, then upper switch is conducted. So UA equals DC plus four. UA SA equals one. UA equals UDC. If SA equals zero, that means upper switch is off, low switch is off, in this case, UA equals zero. Mm -hmm. In the same way, we can get the uh, 
uh, we can got the UB equals SB times UC. UC equals SC times UC. Mm -hmm. So in this way, we got the uh, relationship of AC side voltage, uh, the voltage relation between AC side and DC side. Mm -hmm. So we already got the relationship between the variable between the DC side and AC side. So we can now we can replace replace the, this black box black box with the terminal relations. So we can got this. We replace the switching network by this control source network. So actually here the the DC side is replaced by by this network composed of three consoles. Mm -hmm. Actually, IDC equals these three consoles. Mm -hmm. We just derive. And the uh, AC voltage is represented by three controlled voltages. You see, UA equals uh, SA times UDC. Mm -hmm. UB equals SV UDC. Where's the UD? UDC is here. Mm -hmm. So it's actually it's a it's a, a control voltage. Mm -hmm. It's con for for this control voltage controlled by UDC. Also control the native uh, switching functions. Mm -hmm. The same true for so. So uh, we got uh, now we already got uh, uh, we replace switching network by equivalent control source network. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, actually it's an invariant topology, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, because uh, here S A S D S D switching function is discontinuous. Mm -hmm. It's discontinuous. Also here, SASB is discontinuous. So actually, uh, this circuit uh, waveform is discontinuous. Mm -hmm. So we got a discontinuous model. So next, next we, we want uh, for uh, this because discontinuous model has many harmonics components. So we want to filter out the high frequency harmonics component. So we introduce uh, average over switching here operation. So we uh, introduce, uh, introduce uh, 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 we call it average over uh, average over switching here, and the notation like that. Actually, it's a uh, uh, integration. TS is a switching peer related to the switching frequency of this in gradient inverters. And uh, the integration, uh, integrate generation is a, uh, is a uh, switching peer. And actually, we can see it's a moving average. So we can see in the uh, in the integration range, both the uh, low limit or upper limit, there is a time. So after the averaging over the switching period, it's still a time function. So uh, what is the physical mean? Here is a waveform. We have a waveform with a ripple of the switching period. With ripple, we we process uh, uh, this uh, signal through uh, averaging of uh, peer. We got a smooth line because by using this uh, averaging of a switching peer, actually the switching harmonics is filtered out, so the waveform becomes smooth.
But the low frequency component, we can say low frequency component is still very good cheating. Can keep in the low frequency components. Yeah. But the high frequency switching harmonics is, uh, is uh, limited. So what's the meaning? Uh, what's the meaning of the physical meaning of the, this transformation? So let's uh, introduce a uh, uh, function. We introduce a function HT. HT actually uh, only has a value uh, from range from, from uh, CLO to TS. TS is the switching here. And uh, the amplitude is the 1 over TS. Other times is all is zero. So uh, let's imagine if TS is reduced to very small, the amplitude will go very high. But the energy, if you integrate the, the uh, square is equal to one. The square equal to one. So. Uh, if you reduce, if the uh, switching period is limiting to zero, actually this is a what function? It's a dark function, dark functions. Mm -hmm. We learn in mathematics. So by introducing this uh, function, uh, the average over uh, switching period actually can <coughs> express by the convolution of the signal with this HT functions. Mm -hmm. So this operation, uh, every over switching period operation can look as uh, we add a signal to a system. The system uh, can be, the system's characteristic can be described by its impulse response. The impulse response is like this. Mm -hmm. The system, the impulse response is described by this functions. And to further understand what is the system look like. Actually, according to the circuit theory, the system characteristic can be described by impulse uh, response, like HT. Also can be described by the, in the frequency domain. So we make a uh, transformation, feeder transformation for this uh, impulse response. After mathematics, we can got, a, uh, we got, can got a, uh, frequency response characteristic like this. So this frequency characteristic shows that actually this uh, the system with impulse response like this actually it's a low pass filter. The bandwidth is less than this is switching frequency less than switching frequency. All the switching harmonics is equal to zero mm -hmm. for this uh, for this uh, system. So this system's characteristics like a low pass filter. So operating the uh, uh, average over switching period is equivalent to that the signal uh, filtered by a low pass filter like this. So what's the meaning? The mean, what's the meaning of the average over switching period? Average over switching period, just like a low pass filter. All the uh, switching harmonics is set to zero. Mm -hmm. And the bandwidth of the, this low pass filter is less than the switching frequencies. Mm -hmm. So just like uh, uh, some people uh, uh, take the sunglasses. So you take the sunglasses and you want to see things more clear, not want to see, see things uh, 
unclear. Why? When you take the sunglasses, uh, uh, you can see more clearly because you eliminate some unwanted high frequency light. So the same too, by using this transformation, we can eliminate high frequency switching harmonics. We don't want to see because it will become our model too complicated to understand. So just like you take a sunglasses, we can eliminate high frequency components. But we can still keep low frequency components very clear. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we take sunglasses, we cannot see the dynamic. It's very dangerous for you to drive the car. So this is a very, it's true for the, for the model. For the models, we want the frequencies, the uh, uh, dynamics of the low the switching frequency, but we want to eliminate high frequency harmonics, which will make our model so complicated. So this is the idea. So you, we, we, we make the, uh, uh, we make the, uh, by applying the average, of the switching period to all the variables, you see. All the variables take a cross. All the variables take a sunglasses. Mm -hmm. That means we want to eliminate the uh, switching frequency harmonics. Mm -hmm. So F, it can be approved for the linear circuit for the linear system, you operate in the switching period average. Actually, the circuit will not change. The, the values, capacitor values, inductive values will not change. So we only pay attention to the, this uh, non-linear, uh, this current source, voltage source in non-linear. We only pay the, uh, attention to the uh, how how the effect of the switching here to this uh, non-linear uh, control sources. Let's take uh, the, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, voltage source, control the voltage source. This a voltage source will make an average of a switching here. Uh, as we know, because the a uh, switching period is relatively short. And for the DC side voltage, usually it's continuous because there is a capacitor in DC side. So the actually the changing of the U DC is continuous in one switching period TS. So we can make approximation by replace the uh, replace U DC with its average values in the one switch here, mm -hmm. just like uh, in the calculus. If the uh, TS is very short, we can replace uh, new DC with its uh, average value in this short period. So in this way, because new DC is constant in, in the integration rate, we can take the new DC average out of the integration. And uh, so we are remaining the integration of the switching function. We remain S A is the switching function for phase A to that. Mm -hmm. So originally the S A is discontinuous. Mm -hmm. As we uh, defined before, actually this, is, this, is, this integration and divided by T S is defined as the duty side. DA. This is actually DA after integration. And averaged by divided by TS, it's actually it's the DA. It's the, this one is DA. So in this way we we got uh, our actually this uh, SA times UDC uh, after the average over switching here equals the uh, average value of UDC 
time duty cycle of this fixed day. The same for for the voltage source of the uh, phase B and the phase C. Mm -hmm. And uh, then for the uh, for the current source, we take the, this current source, it's a non And we also have, uh, in uh, the same way, uh, the current source after the uh, uh, approximation, we got that it equals uh, dA times uh, average value from, of the I1 A over 1 through mm -hmm. The same true for phase B and phase C. So now we got to the average value for both the voltage source, control the voltage source and the current source. So we can replace this average value to original models. So in this way, actually, we got to the average models for a great mm -hmm. So this is a continuous model. Mm -hmm. Continuous model. And it is described low frequency dynamics of the current. What's the meaning of low frequency? It's a relativity concept. When we say low frequency, that means lower than the switching frequency. Because this converter has a switching frequency. Lower than the switching frequency. Mm -hmm. Actually, it can keep the dynamics of the low frequency. But because of this average, so all the switching level, including the switching components, it's the sideband, switching frequency, harmonic, and the sidebands is eliminated. <coughs> Just I see it like uh, you take a sunglasses to look at the dynamics of this current. But it's keep the low frequency components. Dynamics of the grid So actually, this uh, uh, circuit already can be used in simulation. You can use this circuit to do the simulation. It's more faster than the switching model circuit because all the variable here is continuous. And you see, DA, DV, this actually is a duty cycle for phase A, phase B, phase C. It's the actual control value. Mm -hmm. And all other variable you can find in this graph. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this is actually a uh, uh, model in the static frame. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, actually, this model can be used. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can see this is a non-linear. This part is a linear, but this part is non-linear. Because the current source is, current source and voltage source is non -linear. We take one example. For this current source, the current source is uh, related to DA. DA is a control value. It is uh, decided by the uh, PWF. Mm -hmm. It's a control value. And I want it. it's actually uh, is a current flowing to the inductor. It's a state there. So we can see there is a multiplication, multiple multiplication of the control variable with the state there. So it's a nonlinear. It's a nonlinear current source, control current source. This is also nonlinear. The voltage source is also known. In circuit theory, we, we already studied control sources. In circuit theory, only, we only study the linear control voltage source or control current source. But here, it's a known. And uh, uh, because we already have the uh, we already have the uh, uh, circuit, 
So it's easy for us to uh, drive the equation. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, let's, let's uh, first drive the equation for AC. We can see for the, for the uh, AC side, we take the phase A as, as an example. Actually, there is two loops in the AC side, loop 1 and loop B, loop 2. So for each loop, we can drive one state uh, equation. And for this loop 2, it's easy to write an uh, equation. And we also, for this node, we can, according to the Kirchhoff's uh, uh, current uh, laws, we can uh, get another equation. <coughs> so for phase A, we can get three equations. Two is according to the KDR voltage and one with the uh, KDR current laws. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, we can write an equation for phase B and phase C. So uh, for phase A, we can got three equations. For phase B, we can got three equations. Phase C, we can got three equations. We can write a uh, first row uh, actually related to the uh, inductor L1, L1, L1B, L1C, mm -hmm. inductor equations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also can combine these three equations related to the L2, L, uh, L, uh, L2A, L to B, L to, to C. Then combine these three equations together. And for, we also combine three non-equations together related to the capacitor, capacitor voltages, phase A, phase B, and phase C. So I, want, uh, I don't want to go to many detail. So if you are interested, you can read the slides later. And also for the DC side, for the DC side, actually, we can uh, drive the equation. Mm -hmm. Actually, we got this equation before. For DC side, DC side is composed of you know, three, three colors. Uh, can draw as a matrix form. So, but combine the AC side equation with DC side equation. Actually, we already get the all the questions for them, for this great process. And for simplified notation, we can introduce a vector. Mm -hmm. Introduce the vector. Uh, for example, for in that current L1, uh, L1, we can introduce a current I1 vector. For the current, uh, a, in, in inductor 2 for phase A, phase B, and phase C, we can introduce a vector IT. For the, uh, for the uh, capacitor voltage on uh, phase A, phase B, and phase C, we, call, we can introduce a vector UC. For the, uh, for the uh, uh, central point, uh, we can introduce a vector UN and for, for the voltage difference between the uh, center point and the capacitor and the center point of the uh, uh, source volt, we can introduce a vector here. Uh, for the duty cycle we are using, we can introduce a duty cycle. By introducing this vector, these equations can be sim simplified like this. And now, up to now, we already get a, a state space average model in static ABC frame. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is a vector form. This is an explosive uh, uh, components form. So actually they are equivalent. And uh, uh, as we know, actually for uh, three phase systems, Actually, phase A, phase B, phase C 
component is not independent. Not independent. And uh, so actually, uh, we prefer if we can transform from the ABC frame to the rotating detail frame. Actually, we can sim simplify the questions. So then we will make the transformation. So some of the they are really like before make a transformation from the static ABC frame to rotation detail of frames. So this is the transformation. Mm -hmm. So and uh, uh, this actually this is the orthogonal transformation. So it's inverse. It's very simple. It's inverse actually equal to its transpose. Mm -hmm. So by introducing this transformation, we, we can uh, possibly to simplify the equation. For example, if we have a, uh, a balanced uh, uh, three-phase voltage, VA, VB, VC, it's constitute a vector. Through the, uh, it's in ABC frame. If we look at it, transform into DQ frame, after this calculation we find it's become, originally it's a time-varying vector, but in DQ frame it's become a constant vector. Mm -hmm. It's become a constant vector. So for the, for the symmetrical balance, the three phase, after the transformation, it's time variable uh, vector become a constant vector. Mm -hmm. So by introducing uh, this transformation, uh, this is the uh, equation we obtained in ABC step four. So we want to see it in the DQO DQO frame or DQO zero frame. So we replace all the variables. This is the duty cycle vector uh, with the vector in DQO offer. And the capacitor volt with the uh, variable in DQO offer. And the source volt with the variable in DQO offer. And in that term, and in that term, uh, one, in that column two with DKO frame. And by this uh, uh, transformation, the above equation can be expressed by all the variables in DKO frame. <coughs> so later there is uh, uh, some uh, mathematical transformations. And I want to ignore this uh, calculation. Uh -huh. So if you are interested, you can read it by yourself. And if, uh, after uh, 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 mathematics uh, transformation, we got an uh, equation in uh, DKO frames, mm -hmm. like this. So in this frame, we, can, we see the duty cycle become uh, uh, DD DKO D0 means the duty cycle is already transferred from DKO ABC frame to DKO frame. And also the capacitive voltage already transformed from the ABC frame to rotating DKO frame. And the same true for the current in that kind L1 and in that kind L2 or transform to the rotating frame. And uh, let's see the uh, first uh, equation in the uh, third law. In the third law, actually, we see uh, this is the uh, uh, zero sequence curve on the inductor area. Actually, uh, for inductor, because this three curve uh, According to Kashkov's law, these three colors add together equal to zero. 
are equal to zero. So actually there are no zero sequence. So that means I one O. Zero sequence component in that column is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. The same true for this cut set. According to Tishhoff's law, these three colors added together is zero. That means zero sequence component is zero. So this is zero, this is zero. Mm -hmm. Also for the balanced system, these three capacity voltages, uh, if uh, the balance, that means if we add these three volts together, it equals zero. So that means zero sequence of the capacitor U C zero is also zero. So, so for this equation, the the third row all times is zero. So third row can be eliminated. So the actual we can simplify. The same true for second equation. The third row also can be eliminated. And also is true for this equation. The third row also because this term, the third equation actually is normally left side, right side, or equals to zero. So by by this simplification, uh, by eliminating the third equation for each. Vector matrix, we can got us simplify. I just said the third row equation, and then we got the simplified equations. Only composed of the D Q components. Mm -hmm. There, because CL sequence is equal to K. So this is the model. Mm -hmm. Actually. We have a, a, we have a three matrix equations, mm -hmm. and this is called output equations. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, actually is uh, uh, differential equations. Three different. We have actually we have three uh, uh, three state variables. I one D, I one Q and the UCD, UCQ, I2D, I2Q. Six, we have six state value. We have six equations. So actually, we can solve these equations. And this is the output equations. And actually, with these equations, we can draw the equivalent circuit. Mm -hmm. With these equations, we can draw the equivalent circuit. For example, for, for the uh, first equation, we can draw the equivalent circuit. And because the first equation is related in that color, I want uh, this in that area. So first, first of all, we can draw the equivalent circuit here. And for the, for the second law, Dark blue, we can draw the equivalent circuit here. And for the for the uh, for this equation, for the peak, we can draw the equivalent circuit here. For the uh, red one uh, equation, we can draw the equivalent circuit here. And for the uh, light uh, green equation, we can draw the According to the Kirchhoff's law, we can draw this equivalency circuit here. For the uh, dark blue, dark green uh, equation, we can draw the equivalency here. And for the output equation, we can draw the equivalency circuit here. It's easy to see. ID equals uh, uh, IDD, uh, DD times I1D. And the plus EQ times one I one Q. Mm -hmm. So in, with this equation, we can got the equivalent circuit. Mm -hmm. And if we uh, 
uh, if we uh, if we look more detail on the, uh, on this equivalent search, actually we find this is uh, related to the current details ID1 and ID ID2. This is related to the Q axis color. I1 Q, I2 Q. But we find there is some couple between the, uh, this part, upper set and low set. This is a, a couple. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, there is a couple between this term and this term. And this is also mm -hmm. That means in the, in the circuit related to decoses color, ID, I1D, and I2D, it is also related to some term from the Q axis. You see? This is from the Q axis. This term from the Q axis. The same true for Q axis equivalent circuit. So there is actually a couple between D axis and the Q axis. Also, it's a non necessary. So actually, we can find this steady state by assuming the uh, uh, assume eliminate the, the derivative terms and then replace all the variable with capital letters. We can go to the steadiness equations. And uh, as I said, it's it, actually this equation is done because there is a multiplication between the state variable and the control variable. D E and D F D Q actually is the control variable. And uh, I I D I one D I two Q actually is a state variable. And the control variable and state variable multiplication. So it's a uh, Nonlinear system. So to linearize, we can interpret by using different methods. So, for example, uh, this is uh, this one. It's a nonlinear. So we can use a uh, 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 differential method in calculus. Mm -hmm. By calculus, we can get uh, uh, make it linearized. Mm -hmm. The same true. For this part, it's a downward down. We When we uh, multiply it it's like this, then we can use a, a differential method. Mm -hmm. Fix first term and make the, make the difference, difference for second. And then we fix the second term, make the uh, fixed uh, uh, second term here and make the differential for the first term. And the same true for this tense. In this way, we can linearize the nonlinear part. So we replace the nonlinear part with the linearized results. We finally, we got linearized equations. So finally, we got a linearized Space space equations and also linearized output equation. So on the control theorem, we usually put the state value in the left side. So we would like to put all the state variable derivative derivation in the left side and put other variable in the right side. So in this way we call the six. Actually, if we expose it, we call it a six uh, state space, six uh, state variable equations. And the final one is actually it's the output equation. Up to now, we already got the uh, control model for the gradient inverse. Mm -hmm. And this control model is in the, we call it the detail frame, in the rotating detail frame.
And there is this equation we can draw the equivalent circuit, uh, uh, control diagrams. Mm -hmm. Control diagrams. So we can uh, roughly we can see this is related to the dx. Yeah. Control variable is in uh, dx, and the output current is in the dx. Huh? And the control variable in Q axis and the outer variable in Q axis. But we find actually there yeah, is some couplings mm -hmm. between the uh, D axis part and the Q axis part. So we can see there yeah, is actually there yeah, is three three couplings, mm -hmm. three between the D-axis control loop and Q-axis control mm -hmm. And it's also high order systems. So, so uh, usually in control theory, we want to decouple to, to D-axis and Q-axis. So let's take a one time as an example. We want to find the decoupling wave. This is a decoupling from the Q axis to D axis. Mm -hmm. So actually, we can move this adding point from here <coughs> to here. Mm -hmm. From here to here. Because there is a gain equals UD. When we move the adding point from here to here, we should multiply the reciprocal of the gain. This gain is UD, the reciprocal is 1 over the mm -hmm. This is the learn from control theory. Mm -hmm. So if we add one term here, one thing here, we, uh, here the input is also decreases uh, in that term, I1 here. These two terms has the same size, but you pay attention, opposite, opposite polarity. So if by adding this one, actually, this part is eliminated. Mm -hmm. So this is the couple. By adding the term with the same size with this term, we can cancel the coupling term of this. And the same true for this term and this term. So, so if we want to eliminate the coupling of the QX to the DX, we should add three terms. Mm -hmm. The first term is used, I want, is used to eliminate the function of this one. The second term is used to eliminate coupling from the UC term. The third term is used to eliminate the coupling of the I to Q to DX. So by adding this term to the input duty side, DX component, we can eliminate coupling from it. Q axis to the DX. The same way, by adding three times here, we can eliminate the coupling from the from the DX to the Q axis. But please pay attention. In this calculation, first time is only both uh, way constant. A second, we should the S S means make the derivative. Mm -hmm. This one is make a second order derivative. Introducing the derivative, we're introducing noise. Mm -hmm. So it's not good. So in the computer, we actually theory, you should avoid to using the derivative. But on the theory, if we want to decouple, 
we should add in this derivative. Mm -hmm. So on the theory, by introducing the three terms for dx, three terms for qx, we can eliminate the coupling between the dx and the qx. So that means by introducing the decoupling, this third and simplify into two single input, single output systems. Simplify into two single input, single output systems. So it's more easy to design single input, single output system compared with design two input, two output systems. Mm -hmm. So this is the benefit of the decoupling. The problem is, if you want to decouple, you should introduce these derivations. So, so this is for actually for the a grid inversion with area. There are two types of feedback. You can feedback from the this area one in that color. You can also feedback from the uh, grid side. From, from the grid side. So we can, uh, after the decoupling, uh, after the decoupling, I just need to, uh, the system become a two, uh, single, in S, SIS out system, S, single in, single out systems. So we can drive open loop tra transport functions. We can see, uh, it's uh, actually it's a three order system. Either you feedback from here or feedback from it's a three order system. I draw the open loop transformation here. It's a three order system and it's a random the peak here. So uh, I make some calculations. So because of uh, random existing or random peak. So bandwidth, if you use a PI uh, controller for this case, the, uh, the red frequency is in one kilohertz, one kilohertz. So if we design a system with stability, we should limit it, use a PI controller. We should limit the crossover frequency. The crossover frequency is uh, limited to 100. So because the cross frequency is relatively low, so it will cause low dynamics. So also make the current control uh, performance is poor. So the power quality density, uh, power quality will be worse because you are close to loop, you are close, you are crossover frequency. You know. mm -hmm. You can, cannot eliminate high frequency component. Mm -hmm. So for some of these problems, we introduce we call it average weighting, average current control. This is a model we already obtained for the system. And uh, the idea is uh, we have we have uh, dx uh, current equations. For impact error, we also have an uh, equation for uh, impact L2 dx. So we add this equation together, and we also have an equation for Q's axis curve, L1 and L2. So we add these two equations together. Mm -hmm. And we write here, we introduce, uh, 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 we define a weighted current, weighted current for d-axis and q-axis, like this. Actually, it's weighted by the, by index values, L1 and L2. So by introduce this, this two variables, and uh, these two equations, can be simplified like this. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, actually, this two count is uh, weighted by the impact values. Mm -hmm. So, this two equation is a first order equation. We can draw the equivalent circuit like this. And we also can draw the uh, 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 control diagrams. So, in this case, we see this is a D axis uh, controller. Uh, uh, duty side component dx. This is duty side component of qx. This is now it's become weighted current for dx and weighted current for qx. By investigating the dx current and qx, we find only have one coupling term, and the system become a sing single order system by introducing weighted current controls. And this decoupling term can be eliminated by introducing the uh, decoupling term here. <coughs> so after we introduce the decoupling term, actually we can eliminate this decoupling. So this term finally began uh, SO, SR, two SO, SR systems. Besides, we find the system become a single order system. Single order system always stable. It's easy to design the controller. Mm -hmm. And we also can draw the transfer function. Transfer function. Uh, this is the original uh, uh, system. This is the when we introduce the weighted current control, we got the open loop trans function. It's only a single order. We draw the trans function here. This is the case for the traditional control. It's a third order, and it has a, a oscillations. By introducing the weighted average current control, we got a, a single order system. So actually, the system is a simplified from three order to single order. And the relevant peak is disappeared. So we still use a PI controller. And because, because there is no oscillation, so we can design a, a system with high bandwidth. So in this way, this is a traditional design the frequency, the crossover frequency, 100. Now it's increased the, about uh, six times. Mm -hmm. So we make a calculation. Uh, uh, for This is a comparison. This is uh, with a traditional control. This is by weighted current control. Actually, we detect the current of inductor R1 and R2, make the uh, weighted uh, value uh, according to the, these two inductor uh, values. So by introduce the weighted average current control, we find that we can increase the bandwidth. This is the uh, original control. The bandwidth is low, and with the weighted current control, we can in increase the bandwidth from five to times. So in this way, actually, we increase the gain in the low frequencies. So we can improve uh, uh, dynamics. Also improve the uh, great current of tractor abilities. And power quality is improved. And with the weighted average current control, uh, the system is simplified to single or first order and it affected damping, the, also damping the LC hair filters. So I introduced the weighted average current control. The system is, is simplified from three order to the one order, first order, and the random peak in the frequency characteristic is disappeared. There are only, only one couple test. So it's very easy. 
to eliminate the decoupling. And the bandwidth of the total system is increased significantly. The dynamics is improved. So this is uh, this is uh, uh, finishing my today's talk about the uh, modeling of the uh, uh, grid emergence. So any questions? We still have a few minutes. Any questions or comments? Yeah. Thank you very much for, for the presentation. Anyone have a question about the presentation? Yeah. Please. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. I have a question, Mr. Yeah. Mark. Uh, which is the Bernard control approach to apply to the grid inverters? Uh, you mean application? Yeah. So uh, our application is, uh, now has been using the PV inverter, high power PV inverter. No, control approach, uh, PID, PIR. But now we are, we are uh, using tradition, PR, PR control. Okay. So in the comparison, we use PR controller to compare uh, the widget average control with the tradition average. Relative control can be applied to this inverter? Uh, 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 I think it can be used because our method is basically can simplify the model. So after the model is simplified, you can use other models to control that. Okay. Another question, please. please. Yeah. Any question? Yeah. Don't be shy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, Dr. Uh, I have a question. It's a, it's a question, maybe full question, but... Never there is a full question. <laughs> yeah. What kind of program do you use to simulate that, uh, that model? You mean software? Yes, what software? Uh, uh, usually, uh, usually for, for, the, uh, for the analysis, I use the MATLAB. MATLAB. Just MATLAB. Uh, we, we, we also use uh, MATLAB or simulate. Yeah, MATLAB or simulate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because we got the uh, mathematical questions. So it's easy to use math math to draw the frequency. But you put the, the mathematical equations or the power supplies. Uh... Uh, we we uh, 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 for this study we want to get uh, analytical math mathematical equations. So in this way we can analytically design the controllers. After designing the controller. To verify the design, we will use a, a, a system simulation tool to compare our other designs. Then because uh, any times I try to simulate that kind of uh, models uh -huh. with power supplies, but I can't. Uh -huh. <laughs> so my question is for that. Maybe you can help me with. Yeah, with that we, we usually we 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 make a, a analytical design. After any other design, then we use a circuit models to simulate the total system to see if it's consistent, uh, the design, any of the design is correct. Okay. And then do the experiment to verify. Yeah. Another question? Thank you for your question. I think so, it's all. <laughs> it's for it's all the work today. Thank you very much for coming.